Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Our Father, we are grateful to you that this evening again it has pleased you to gather us. It has pleased you to bring us from our various homes and workplaces to your feet for another period of instruction, another time of releasing your mind unto us. Holy Father, we want to ask that in mercy you will be pleased again to break upon us uh, by your word. We want to ask that it will please you to release your mind afresh to us. We want to ask that uh, in mercy you will open your heart to us and that you will cause us to understand the principles and issues that you want to raise over our lives to the glory and honor of your name. We plead, Lord, that no heart here will be difficult for you to handle. We ask that mercy will triumph over judgment and that in your own divine providence, our hearts will be reached. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you again to open to the passage where we have been studying in Jeremiah chapter 18. And once again, we will read the first six verses. Jeremiah chapter 18. If again you have found Jeremiah 18, can I hear you say, praise the Lord. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the, hand, in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Yesterday we began uh, looking at this passage and um, a few issues uh, began to arise for us. First, I need to remind you again, like we said yesterday, that God is primarily really speaking to you. And uh, you know, yesterday I was asking you to remove Jeremiah and put your own name as we sense that it is the Lord who is speaking to our hearts. And we came to a point uh, of discovering that the vessel that this potter was making was malformed. It was mad. It didn't turn out well in the hands of the potter. And we began to say very categorically that Anybody who was observing the potter may not necessarily know that something is wrong. Anybody who was just observing the potter making the vessel or clay may ordinarily conclude that uh, what a beautiful piece of vessel that has been made. Only one person could call the result of that enterprise. Who was that person? The potter. Only the potter knew what he had in mind. Only the potter knew the kind of vessel he wanted to make. Only the potter knew the design that he wanted 
the vessel to carry, to bear. And he was the one that called the result and said, no, this particular vessel did not turn out as I envisaged, as I wanted. You know, it's a very strong issue for me in this meeting because it is becoming clear that no matter what you say of me, you may actually be celebrating me. You may be saying, we thank God for Brother Peak. Oh, we thank God for him. I cannot rejoice in your thanking God for me. It will actually be premature for me to celebrate and sit down and say, yes, you need to hear what they are saying about me. Ah, no. It will be foolish of me. The reason it will be foolish of me is that you are not the potter. You are not the right person to call the result for my life. You could actually finish celebrating me. And the one who sent me is saying, what a disappointment this boy is to me. You know, I am, I am praying strongly in my heart that you will understand what the Lord is saying. That it is not sufficient. You know, yesterday when we were saying, those of you who need to cry unto the Lord, come to the altar. Several of you sat down. There's a witness in my heart that many of you are supposed to be at that altar. It's because you didn't go to the potter to call the result. Something is telling you, I'm one of the leaders of the AYF. How can I go out? Excuse me. Who is calling the result? The people you're leading or the potter? You could be celebrating yourself. You can actually be feeling that, oh no, you're very spiritual when you pray like this. And yet, the porter is saying, you're a disappointment. You know, it hasn't left my heart and I'm begging God. I say, please, can you show me my report card? Show me my report card. Don't let men celebrate me prematurely. Don't let men say of me what you're not saying. You know, even as a preacher, sometimes you get to a place and people are talking. They say, you know, this is our brother. He will bring the counsel of God to us. We are sure the heaven will speak. <laughs> that is your result. Do you know that a man can come to preach who has quarreled with his wife and they have not settled and the heavens are closed over him? You are the one who is saying, because of what happened before, when he comes to preach, you say, no, 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 this is our brother. Hey, that man will be foolish to just uh, be comfortable with your own assessment without going to the porter to ask for his report card. You know, I can be looking at you like this, and in my mind, I think that you're here and that you're hearing what we're saying. Meanwhile, if, <laughs> if only the porter can give me your report card. Some of you are here. You're just looking like this as if you're here. But your heart, actually, your body is packed here. But your son we're buying and selling. Very far from here. Maybe you even escaped into this meeting only as a means of escaping the trouble in the house that you have caused. I wish that you will go back and you're asking the porter, excuse me, sir, can I have my report card? Can I have my report card? You know, in my year three in the university, as an undergraduate, the then deputy vice chancellor of my university was teaching me. That Baba didn't know me from Adam. But he just, I don't know, he just took a liking. And he was always watching me. So that was the first time he was teaching us. And he gave a test. Test. Continuous assessment. One of the tests he gave. And somebody beat me with two marks. 
That's assuming I scored 10. The person scored 12. I don't even remember whether it was over 20 or over 10. But I remember that it was two marks that somebody beat me with two marks. So the, the man was, he came, that prof was in the class. And he was calling out the name. When he calls your name, you come and take your script. So when he, he reached my phone, he looked at it and called my name. I was trying to come and he did not wait. He was so angry. He flung, he just, he just threw away the paper. What nonsense. So, you know, my classmates, they were saying, ah, but we know this man. We know this young man now. Could it be that he failed? Is it possible? So I took the, the script and I saw that I scored I saw my score. By that time, I had not known what others had scored. And I was saying, God, but it was not a failure. It was not even a B. So I was, I was worried. He talked and talked. Then he left the class. So I began to find out who scored the... What did you score? The people I knew that could compete with me. What did you score? What did you score? And I discovered that somebody scored, I'm using like 12, and I scored 10. Or maybe if it was over 10, maybe he scored 10 and I scored 8. Ah! But the man was so angry. So one of my classmates said, please, let's go to his office later so you can beg him. So I went. Because, I mean, he's old enough to be my father. He had his PhD in 1969. So he's not, is it, is it me? He's a, so what was his interest? It's just that he took me as a son. When I entered his office, there were people there. As soon as he saw me, he took off again. Can you imagine? What nonsense. What were you thinking about? So, you know, in my young heart then, I said, Everybody here now will think I'm one dollar. So I said, ah, sir, but the highest only beat me with two marks. <laughs> that was the worst mistake I made. The man said, what? What? So you're comfortable for somebody to beat you? With you? He started... My friend just drew me like this. He said, please, come, 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 come. Let's go. It took about two days of serious pleading. I had to go and apologize for allowing somebody to beat me with two marks. I also had to make a promise that it will never happen again. Excuse me, why was the man so angry? He said to me, from what I know of you, from your participation in class, from what I can see and what I'm looking for, you are more capable than what you're giving me. I don't know whether you're understanding. In a limited sense, this was the porter training us, fashioning us. Actually, ap apart from God, he is the next reason that I'm in the academic world today. I remember that when I was announced a full professor, I sent a message to him. He's an old man now. He's, he's in his 80s. I sent a message. He still lives in Port Harcourt. I sent a message to him. I said, I said, Baba, the, the food you began to cook is getting cooked now. He was very happy. I remember the message he sent to me when he heard I was assessing the first time I, I had to, I had the opportunity to assess another full professor in another university. You know, when you're a professor of worth, they can now call you to assess others to determine whether they are qualified to be professors or not. That's like an honor 
a recognition of your worth. And I had to, I had to say to him, I thank you again for what you began to do. Because that stimulated the scholarly instinct in me. I said, uh-uh. It means this man, I'm actually performing below what I am supposed to perform. And I made up my mind from that day. There is no cause. Ah, we will fight it out. And worse for me, at the end of the semester, when they are proving results, he's, he's an elderly professor, so has a lot of respect. He will go and check, say, what about your course? What did my boy score? May God help me. Oh, may God help me. May God help me. You know, last year, I was invited to preach in Port Harcourt, and I told him I was good. That Baba, he hosted a dinner in my honor. I appreciate him till tomorrow. But you see what I'm talking about? To my classmates, they said, ah, very intelligent. To the potter that was molding us in class, I was a disappointment. You know, I'm praying that you will seriously understand what the Lord is dealing with. How can you be celebrating yourself? How can you be content because you're one of the leaders of AYF? How can you be comfortable? Because people say, yes, he's spiritual. We thank God for it. Have you gone to ask for your report card from the porter? Because the last time you were lost in, even in church, we didn't know. Your heart was not with us. We were saying, thank God, the brother came for fellowship. Thank God, the sister is in fellowship. But sister was already gone while we were in fellowship. Brother was not hearing whatever the Lord was saying. His heart was gone. And suddenly we finish, we say, let's let brother so, so, and so lead us in the closing prayer. So he quickly stands up because he's an actor. And he just adjusts himself. And he puts on the King James stone. He said, we're in prayers. Heavenly Father, Mm. And he's actually just hiding the emptiness that is in his heart. Ah, sir, I am begging you. Can you go to the porter and ask for your report card? Please go. You know, sometimes you arrive in church with your wife and you're smiling. And when brother sees you, say, Ah, sister, sister, sister didn't hear. He say, my dear, darling, brother, this is greeting you. <laughs> and you're smiling. Ah, and the brother is saying, what a wonderful brother. This, two, this couple, eh? Oh, this couple, this couple. Ah, I wish he went to the report, went to ask for his report card. You didn't see his report card. That's why you're, you're celebrating them. You didn't know how he shouted that woman down before they left the house. You didn't know the abuse because she was not quick to finish and enter the car. How he had told her her life history and said, your mother didn't train you well. And you that your mother trained well does not know how to respect somebody else's mother. Waiting no consigner. Now you carry your mouth. They go for you. You didn't ask for your report card. So while this vessel was made, yesterday we were checking it. This vessel was made. <laughs> and all of us are saying, yes, thank God. The porter was saying, no. No. This was not what we intended. I see so many young girls. You know, one time I was pastoring a, a very young congregation. 90% of them were university students. It's actually the chapel, close, just by the campus gate. <laughs> and I began to hear, I said, what's well, happening? He said, you know, you know, he asked me out. I said, he asked you, what is happening between you and this brother? I said, well, he asked me out. 
I say, eh? What kind of language is that? You know, that's what many of you speak. Say, we are going out. I say, you're going out. When are you coming in? He asked you out. He didn't ask you in. You don't understand that it is simply a baptismal name we have given to irresponsibility. The boyfriend and girlfriend they do in the world, you, you, you can't call it boyfriend and girlfriend. So you say, he asked me out. We are going out. Going out to where? Out of your father's compound. When are you going to come in? Somebody is asking you out of righteousness. He asked you out. Ah, I said, no, 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 my children. Christians don't do boyfriend and girlfriend, though. We know they do like that. When a young man reaches the age that he senses heaven is saying, it's time to get a wife, he begins to pray, Lord, so who are you leading me to? And when the, he's convinced about the person that the Lord is leading him to, he goes to say, this is my persuasion. I would like to marry you. If the sister agrees, then they begin courtship. Between that time and wedding is a period of courtship. And I normally will encourage, as soon as the sister says, if the sister is worth her salt, as the brother also comes, she also goes to pray. And when she is convinced, of course, in counsel with those who have spiritual authority over her, when she is convinced, the two of them should immediately report themselves to those who have spiritual authority over them. Some of you are into relationships nobody knows about. So even when you're dying inside and you're being defiled inside, you see, nobody knows, nobody can ask you a question. The day the brother walks out, you say your heart broken. Who, but who will you tell? Who knew what you were going into? He said, leave me, leave me, leave me. I, I, I want to be free. I want to be free. Do you want me to tell you the truth? What's your name? Eh? Tega. Free people go to hell. Did you hear me? What did I say? Free people, where do they go to? Hell. Anybody that is free to do what he wants, speak the way he wants, go to where he wants, say what he wants to say, I don't see him arriving at the gate of heaven. The first thing you lose when you become a Christian is your independence. You become a perpetual dependent on Jesus. It's no longer, that's what I like. No, no, no. You're saying, what does my master say? What does he want? You become like Mary. Whatever they say, say, be it unto me according to thy word. So please, I am I'm going to ask you to help me inquire from the person by your side. Say, have you gone to the porter to ask for your report card? You know, some people will do face like this so that you will be afraid to ask them. We're in church. Say, bro, bro, I'm asking you. Have you asked the, re the, the porter for your report card? Don't let anybody intimidate you in church. They do face like this as if they are very spiritual so that you don't ask them. Ask them. Ask me too. In fact, advise this person. Say, go to the port and collect your report card. And please, next time somebody is praising you, before your head starts swelling up, can you quickly withdraw and go and ask the porter whether what that person is saying is true about you? Is that what heaven is saying about you? I am praying. I am seriously praying that you're taking these things to heart. Are you understanding me? We came to that point yesterday. But before I press on, one other thing I wanted to point out is the fact that this <laughs> encounter cannot take place in any other place. If you check the story, there was only one location in which this encounter took place. Where is the location? Eh? Please speak, speak out. 
the potter's house. The potter's house. This experience could never have been gotten outside the potter's house. Listen, you will not get a correct report card by reading books. You will not get a correct report card by uh, weighing yourself according to what you saw on movie. Uh, are you listening to me? Eh? Some of you, I know you are addicted to African magic. In fact, some of these young people here, the, the, the vision, the, the idea they have about marriage is from African magic. Where early in the morning, the person has woken up with her face, she has already powdered and said, good morning, darling, do you want tea? Who does that in real life? Eh, eh, make I ask you, which woman they wake up early six o'clock, you don't buy, don't rub pancake, you don't put uh, this thing, you don't dress where well, well. they are just waking up and say, good morning, my darling, uh, uh, coffee or tea for you. That's what you're breaking your head over. That's your image of marriage. Ah! In real life, you will be waking up to a wife who never brush, you go talk in mad this man. Ah, you know, sorry, oh. make a day. Matter not the truth. That's real life. You, you day here, you won't drive your wife because say you no know, be like that's you know, see that sister. They do scare scare. How she go do scare scare like your wife? How your wife go do like that sister? Waiting she sabi. Sister will no get no responsibility. You say, look at your shape. Give that girl three pregnancies and deliveries. Whether it goes still they do look like that. Your wife go better person. If not be mumu, they worry you. They go file nails. 20 minutes, they file one nail. Come paint her. Look her. I know go get time to file nail. Who they cook for? Who they wash for? We begin the look. And won't take that girl, compare your wife. Ah. Uncle, uncle, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It's only in the house of the potter that you can collect a correct report card. Only in the house of the potter. It's only in the presence of the Almighty God that you can get a correct assessment of your life. You know the story I told you from my classmates. They say, ah, the boy, Sabi Book. To our potter. Ah. So what kind of useless result are you giving me like this? My friend, wake up. This is nonsense. That's the potter. I am begging you. If there's one good thing you will do for yourself in this conference, this year is to quickly go to the potter's house. Go there. That's the only place you can collect your results. Praise the Lord. So this evening, I want to press on a little bit. Just in case somebody's asking, say, but eh, I have collected my report card. Actually, from what I know of myself, I am mad in the hands of the potter. The way I talk is not the way a Christian is supposed to be talking. I am mad. I am malformed. Even my dressing. Even my dressing. Fashion has taken over my head. So you no longer find it, consider it anything. To be a distraction to other people. You will wear skirts that are so short. That if you sit down, somebody can be seen through. You say it's fashion. 
You will wear that fashion. You know the, the one when they rain now. That fashion they call come and see. Come and see, oh, come and see. You don't know that dress. You know, come and see that dress. Some of you wear it. And somebody is looking, you see, and say, Come and see, oh, come and see. Even during weddings, some of you dress so terribly, you will be grateful to God you don't meet a vicar like me. You will not enter the church. And no talk, oh, no say, <laughs> it's just the talk. I have walked a bride out of the church. The other priests, they have already come. I was to do the joining. They have already come to start. A, uh, we are gathered here. So they have already read. When I came down, I said, what is this? Out. I saw a pack her dress with race. How can you be deep? Oh, except now something they worry you. They do you something. Because you collected your report card from House of Fashion. They tell you, say, now so then they do them. <laughs> In which gospel? You don't see some of the sisters when they get married. Where they want wet. You don't see them. Then go paint them. They go be like a juju calabar. They say, now make up. They barely look human. You will just see one eye like this. Hey, they do like this. This time, want, something will be like a queen queen. I said, which kind of thing be this? Then be like doll baby, mama, you got time. She better they talk through. Then go, then go paint them, then be like doll baby. And then plaster them, finish, no sabi them. Because person won't make money. He says, no, 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 so that I can charge you plenty. I see in fault. Not to you when wake up, rich... From time when they burn you, they rub powder. And I wake up on money, wait one word. You know, I'll be rub powder again. Person must come plaster your face. If not, be mumu, they worry you. Now, so the boy see you, won't marry you. Please, go to the house of the potter and collect your report card. Don't go anywhere else. Your report card will not be authentic. If it is collected from anywhere else, it's not authentic. Authentic report card must be collected where, sir? The potter's house. Anywhere else you went to collect it, you'll be serious. You just wasted your time. But just in case, you're saying, ah, I am mad in the hands of the potter. Any hope for me? I want to check what happened when the potter discovered that the vessel that he was making was mad. Is your Bible still open? And if it's still open, look at verse 4. Verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Now, please listen. There is hope, but you must take cognizance of certain things. The first thing I want to note is that the clay was completely surrendered in the hands of the potter. Complete. The clay was not arguing. But what is wrong with me? Leave me the way I am. 
as soon as the porter announced the verdict to say look you have not turned out the way I want the clay seemed to be saying shepherd of my soul I give you full control wherever you may lead I will follow I have made a choice the clay made their choice to be totally surrendered in the hands of the potter. I want to say to you, what we are discussing is completely impossible with you unless there is a deliberate desire and choice and decision to surrender completely into my hands into whose hands the potter that's why the only reasonable place to collect your report card is from his hands so when he says but you're not turning out as I wanted let the clay immediately lie down and say I'm available what was it you had in mind can you please make me into that vessel? Make me into that vessel. We make a lot of mistakes even when we became Christians and we still continue it when we lead others to Christ. Somebody is singing, baby, I love you in the world and he becomes a Christian. Immediately something tells him, now that I'm a Christian, I will no longer sing, baby, I love you. I'll be singing, Jesus, I love you. Who told you the potter may not have designed that vessel to be a singer? It is very possible that as a singer in the world, you became born again. And the potter is saying, this new life you're living for me now is not for singing. But because you didn't go to the potter to collect your report card, you simply just transited. You know, in the 80s, there were two prominent musicians that repented. One was Chris Okoti. The other was Jidobi. Do you remember them? Eh? I was not in the same university with them, but my friend was. And he told me the story. He said, every fellowship you will see Chris Okotia. You will see him with his Bible. You will see him with his, his taking notes, Bible study. He, he wanted, he was learning, he wanted to grow. Jidobi, I will organize one concert for Jesus there. I will, uh, I will, uh, he didn't sit down. Do you know that Chris Okotia hardly sings, maybe apart from maybe singing in church today? Abby? Eh? How many albums have you seen him release since he became a Christian? Do you think he lost the talent to sing and play? He's there. But he looks as if he has been able to understand. I don't know him very closely. I've only ministered once in his church in, the, in 1988. That's a long time. So I cannot say I don't know him closely. But I remember that that time even the new converse class, he will take it himself. But you know, B, I saw in the papers, I don't know, older people may remember one sensational headline that Jidobi said Jesus was responsible for all his woes. It didn't last. Yes, at a point he was living in Chris Okoche's boys' quarters, I think, if I, I read that this thing correctly. What do you think is the difference? When a potter, a, a clay, does not sit down completely surrendered in the hands of the potter for a correct, complete molding, <laughs> trouble day for, for tomorrow. So the fact that you were XYZ in the world does not mean that you will automatically translate into that in the kingdom. The new person. Christ is making in you may not be a singer, he may be a preacher. He may not even be a preacher or a singer, he may be a businessman. 
It depends on what the potter wants to make you. So we are discovering that the clay could be made into another vessel because it was completely, totally, absolutely surrendered to the potter. So let me ask you, are you totally surrendered to Jesus? Are you completely surrendered to my Savior? I like Aglican ordination. If it was by choice, Uncle, I'm not going to enter. I'm telling you, the thing is fearful. When you go lie down for there, complete on the floor, complete, you stretch out. And be singing, I surrender, I surrender. Ah, oh boy. If you understand the matter, that's why it's criminal for any priest to misbehave. It's criminal. Because the first, the first thing is the terrible oath you have to take. You have to start declaring that I have never been a member of secret cult. And that I will never be. And if after this time I become, say, I place myself in the wrath of God. <laughs> bro, bro, now a tough thing with that too. The kind of questions they will ask you. You know, you in the congregation, I don't think you don't, you don't, you don't know those things. You're just in the service. Waiting to finish and say congratulations and they snap photo and you go chop rice. You know no day. If you if you understand, you suppose they cry for the man and say, Ah, ah, this one don't die. He don't die. I'm sure you took that kind of oath. Terrible, terrible oath. Don't be waiting to carry small picking and inside. It's a very terrible thing. The clay must be absolutely surrendered in the hands of the potter. Otherwise, the potter cannot make you into another clay, into the clay that he desires, into the vessel that he desires. Some of you have given Jesus 80%. So you can take 80% of my life. But you see, this 20% live and for me. You see, this is my mouth. Now I take the guy. I don't get power to fight, oh. But by the time you finish abusing a dead man, he will wake up. You need to surrender that mouth to Jesus. I don't know what you're still holding back. The unfortunate thing is that the potter cannot use a clay that is surrendered. 99%. You still don't qualify. What's the percentage that qualifies you to be made into the vessel he wants? 100%. 100%. How does he make his men? Ah, I am looking at who is coordinating. Can I check one character just to see how God began to make him? Can I go on? I go exceed 15 minutes, so I can't do it in 15 minutes. Okay. Then say, man, go ahead, though. You, man, when we're call, I say, man, go ahead. I want to check a character. I, we may not be able to study him in details, but at least let's highlight a few things. How his making began. The main major place. And what happened when he missed it? Can you go with me to Genesis? We'll begin at Genesis. And I'm sure you know the man I want to talk about very briefly. Not everything about him. I want to talk about Abraham. Because of our time, I will not be able to read. I would have loved to read the 20 verses 
of Genesis chapter 12. But just keep it open and uh, I'm sure you've read it before. When you get home, read it again. But we may be highlighting one or two verses just for you to see. The first thing I want to note is that before Abraham in chapter 11, the call had come. It was not the first time God was speaking to Abraham. Hello, are you listening to me? It was not the first time. How do I know? You read verse 1 of chapter 7. He said, now the Lord had said. Who is carrying uh, King James Version? Please. Yes, sister, can you just read that verse 1 for me? The first phase. The Lord had said. Thank you. Uh, it's all right, sister. Who is carrying NIV? Please, sir, can you just the first sentence? The Lord had said to Abraham, Sister, you were carrying new living yesterday. Is this still there? Uh, if your Bible is living, let's hear it. God had told Abraham, Let me ask you, is there a difference between had and have? Eh? Had and will. Is there a difference? No. So, do you think the Holy Spirit understands English? No, please, I'm asking sincerely. Does he understand English? So, he knows past tense and present tense. So, when the Bible said, the Lord had said, had said, it means that he has done what? He has said it before. Are you with me? So, what you're reading in chapter 12 is only the time that Abraham now decided to yield completely. The first time, it was not so. So if you step back to chapter 11, you will discover that in verse uh, 31, the Bible says, Terah, he took his son Abraham, then called Abraham, and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son, Abraham's wife, and they went out and went out, they went out with them from all of the Chaldeans to go to where, please? Eh? To go to the land of Canaan. Is that the place they wanted to go to? Eh? Yes, that was where God said Abraham should go to, isn't it? Now, but listen to what happened. And they came to Haran and did what? Was Haran Canaan? No. You know one thing I've discovered in walking with the Lord? 80% obedience is still disobedience. You know, in man's mathematics, if you set an exam and somebody scored 80%, what is that? It's A. Unfortunately, with God, 99.9% .9 is fail. 99.9% .9 in God's exam. What is it, please? You have failed. It's failure. You know, that's why I'm worried that men use themselves to categorize you, to, to assess you, and they are hailing you. They say, Abba, you have tried. At least. At least. He has tried. He's a very spiritual person. I have discovered that as far as obedience is concerned with the Lord, 99.9% .9 is still disobedience. God said to go to the hand, land of Canaan. Abraham, Terah carried them. They went, they left all of the Chaldeans. We will celebrate them and clap. And Do you know that the people in all of the Chaldeans, if you ask them after they have left, where have these people gone to? What will they tell you? Ah, you see, that's my worry. People know you. They say you're a Christian. Will it not be terrible to end in the same hell with them? When you carry your Bible, they say you're going to fellowship. Nobody knows that it's because of one boy that you're going. Brother, 
Is there no one sister you're eyeing for whose reason you're coming to fellowship? And if she's not in fellowship that day, nobody came to fellowship that day. The brethren no longer come to fellowship oh, because one girl was not in fellowship. The people who know you, they have concluded that you're a Christian. The way you carry your Bible and sing choruses, yet heaven says you are a disobedient person. You left all of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan, but you ended up in Haran. Except that it is the potter that is giving us the report card now. Everybody in all of the Chaldeans had concluded that Abraham, Terah, and all of them, where have they gone to? They have gone to Canaan. Only for us to collect the report card <laughs> from the potter. And he says, excuse me, as I'm talking to you now, they are in Haran. Ah! Ah! I am begging God not to allow me make a shipwreck of my life. Unfortunately, Haran and Canaan, they are not the same. Men may celebrate you. They say at least he's a priest. He has tried. He's giving up so much to serve the Lord. I will still be a loser if I am not totally dependent on them. What is the difference with me? If other professors are sleeping with girls to pass them and I do the same thing, what is the difference between me and them? What is the difference between me and other professors? If I finish climbing and I carry the ladder, no other person I was in one PhD defense. And the thing broke my heart. I said, I will not agree. Not while I'm here. The supervisor of that candidate turned against him at the defense. When the heat was much, the man removed himself and actually wanted the candidate to fail. Of course, he's a professor. He has climbed the ladder now so he can remove it. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Our Father, we are grateful to you that this evening again it has pleased you to gather us. It has pleased you to bring us from our various homes and workplaces to your feet for another period of instruction, another time of releasing your mind unto us. Holy Father, we want to ask that in mercy you will be pleased again to break upon us uh, by your word. We want to ask that it will please you to release your mind are fresh to us. I want to ask that uh, in mercy you will open your heart to us and that you will cause us to understand. Is, didn't you see these things? The external examiner had to make me promise. Not the supervisor now. Say, I will allow this candidate to go through on one condition, that you make a promise, I know you, on your honor, that you will go and make sure this work is reworked, these corrections are effected. If you promise me on that condition, I will pass him, because I know you will keep your word. I said, I promise. That was how that man passed. There are some of you, you have reached a particular level. You will remove the ladder, let others not climb. Please go to the porter and collect, collect your report card. I see how you have left Canaan. Left all the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But you didn't arrive. We celebrate you that you have gone to Canaan. But you only ended up in awe of the Chaldeans. I have seen wicked men in Kasok. Wicked. 
And I keep wondering, like my bishop will say, when will this wickedness stop? You will see catechists and deacons complaining and reverence complaining about the archdeacon. How wicked he is to them. In some years to come, those catechists and deacons and reverends become archdeacons and those under them are still complaining. What is wrong? Something is wrong. Wickedness can only stop when you decide that it will stop with me. What I suffered, nobody under me will suffer it. Excuse me, sir. If what you complained about your archdeacon, those under you are still complaining about it. Sir, you may have left off the Chaldeans, but you have not entered Canaan. Where did you stop? How could it be This man left oh, and we are clapping and celebrating. If he was leaving his forwarding address, it would have read can, transferred to Canaan. Only to get the report card from the porter. Where were they located? Haran. And I keep reminding you that Haran is not Canaan. Please help me tell somebody, say, Haran is not Canaan. You do face like this, may not tell him. If you do and say, bro, I they tell you the truth. Haran not be Canaan. Difference day. I hope you never say difference day. Eh? Joke, not joke, but joke, not person name. Same spelling, but they know me the same thing. Canaan and Haran, they are not the same thing. This man left. He left all of the Chaldeans, but he only went as far as Haran. Oh God, may I not stop my journey in Haran in the name of Jesus Christ. Please pray for me, pray for me. Tell God that may I, may Peak not, just say, Lord, let Peak never stop his journey in Haran. Pray for me, pray for me. Ah, you they pray for yourself. Uh -uh. I say pray for me. How can I live all of the Chaldeans that I'm going to Canaan and my journey will terminate in Haran. God forbid. So, the days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran. A man that was destined to die in Canaan. He died in Haran. So when you're meeting Abraham in chapter 12, <laughs> Uncle, something has happened. So the Bible says, now, the Lord had said. So that instruction you find from verse 1 to verse 3, it was not a fresh instruction. The Holy Spirit is just letting us know what had been said before, I don't know how many years ago, to Abraham. It's only that this is the time that he decided now to obey. So in verse 4, the Bible said, Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. This is the first time he's now departing as the Lord had spoken to him. The last time he departed, but not according to what the Lord had said. Because God was saying, Canaan. And Haran looked like... You know the trouble with Haran is that you will gather things so. Hello, are you with me? Eh? That's the trouble with Haran. You know, in, 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 in verse 5, he said, Then Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired, where? In Haran. That's the trouble. Haran will still provide you with property. In Haran, you can still acquire people. In Haran, you can acquire goods. That's why I am not impressed with these preachers that come to tell you, you know, if the Lord say, yes, sir, claim it. Hey, hey, hey. I have a great anointing to pray for your preachers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. I say, brother, cool down. 
When you finish talking like an American, can we go to the Bible? Make we check Bible. When you try to show me things, you say, you know, the Lord is really moving my ministry. I remember that, uh, uh, you know, I was preaching somewhere and uh, somebody sold uh, $25,000 uh, $25, in my ministry. Excuse me, sir. Cool down. Cool down. I am not impressed about the cars that you're riding. I am not impressed about the houses you have acquired because even in Haran, you can acquire those things. Haran can provide you with those things. Keep quiet. I want, I will be wanting to know my report card from who? Men in Haran, they acquire property. Men in Haran, they acquire lives. So excuse me, sir, that your church is filled with people is not sufficient for me to conclude that you're doing God's will. It may be just one indication. But a man in Haran can still acquire people. A pastor can fill his church by telling people what they want to hear. Say, don't disturb anybody. Preach a message that will bless people. <laughs> Somebody was telling my friend, say, this kind of message you people preach. Oh, this man. Must somebody always cry when you preach? This brother pig, they just come and make somebody uncomfortable. Must people cry when you preach? You know, one girl, <laughs> she was very rough. I've given her testimony in several places. Because one of the times I saw God do something. And I discovered that <laughs> ah, you, can, you can be hated if it's for the right thing. So the fact that people are coming around you and say, yes, 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 yes. I don't conclude. You may be in Haram. This girl, eh, if you're talking about rough girls on campus, one of the tough girls on campus, very huge, she will smoke Indian hemp. It's not, uh, you're talking about cultists. Girl, huge like this. And she was in my class. She hated me with a perfect hatred. I know she hates me. She knows that I know that she hates me. When I pick people to talk to and share Jesus with them, I avoid her. I don't know why. One day I was finishing lecture and the Holy Spirit said, get that one for me. It's not the first time the Lord normally does that kind of thing. And then I would say, please, can, can I have a chat with you after the class? So when the Lord said, get that one for me, it was that girl. I said, Lord, who? So I bind that spirit. <laughs> he said, he's not a spirit, you know my voice. I said, get that one for me. How will I even be, how can that kind of person even be seen around me? Reluctantly, I said, you, can you see me after the class? Even she, she was shocked. She said, sir, me? I said, yes. Ah! My heart was doing big, big. I said, look, what kind of trouble is this now? When I finished, I just packed my things and went to my office. Shortly after, there was a knock, and the girl came in. She said, sir, you said I should see you. I said, yes, sit down. I said, before I even tell you why I said you should see me. I said, I, I, no, I, I started, I said, I'm sure you're surprised. She said, yes, I'm very surprised though. That you will, he said, I should come and see you. I said, it's okay. But before I tell you why I said you should see me, can I ask you a question? She said, yes. I said, why do you hate me? She said, sir, you want me to tell you the truth? I said, of course. I said, I hate you. Because you are too bold to preach against sin. You make us uncomfortable. I said, ah, if that's why you hate me, I don't have apologies. 
Should I actually make you comfortable about what will take you to hell? As a matter of fact, it's the same reason that made me send for you. And I began to preach. This tough girl, before I went halfway, she broke down. She was crying like a baby. She gave her life to Christ. She's living as a child of God today. Washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. But why I'm telling you this story is that I discovered that gathering a lot of people around you who speak well of you, it may not be enough for me to conclude that you're doing well. A man in Haran can gather lives. I like it if my life will make a sinner uncomfortable. Not because I condemn him by what I say. But that as he sees me, his life is condemned. And he wants to turn a new leaf. That would be a wonderful thing for me. Ah. Do you think we can study Abraham today? I'm looking at the time. I think I'm going to stop here. I wanted for us to move ahead to see how God began his making when eventually Abraham turned his life over to the Lord. But from your uh, schedule, I see that we're supposed to stop at 6.30. And I like to respect time. You know I'm a teacher, so I like to respect, <laughs> to respect time. So you will permit me to, only that we will take a little time to pray. Tomorrow we will push it on ahead to see what happened. But please just note that a man let me recap a man that will be fashioned by the potter into the vessel that he, the potter, desires. Number one has to be absolutely, totally, completely, unqualifiedly surrendered to the potter's hands. The clay must be surrendered. Number two, the only authentic place to get your report card is where, please? Is the potter's house. Stop getting your report card from colleagues. Stop getting your report card even from your pastor. Your pastor doesn't know everything about you. You come smiling with him, but he may not know that you beat your wife. And thirdly, a man can leave Canaan, I mean all of the Chaldeans, and everybody around all of the Chaldeans, they are shouting, they say, wonderful, 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 he has gone, he has gone. Where has he gone? They say he has gone to Canaan, but only stop at Haran. The people who say you're a Christian, do they know that you're still fornicating? Uncle, uncle, the people that know you're a Christian, do they know that you sponsored abortion to cover your responsibilities? Check, check. They say you have left all the Chaldeans. They didn't know you stopped in Haran. Are you not a wicked person? And please, don't use physical things to cover your irresponsibility in Haran. Because even men in Haran, they can acquire things. They can acquire men, souls, lives. They can be loved. They can be celebrated. But they are in Haran. Short of where Jehovah has called them to go. As I close, I want to ask you a question. You may have left all of the Chaldeans. But uncle, auntie, have you stopped in Haran? Let us pray. Please, sir, come and lead us to pray. Yes. May God help you to charge us to pray. Let's rise. The word of God has been preached to us. Where have you stopped your journey? 
Are you still moving to Canaan or you've stopped in Aram? Can you open your mouth and talk to God? Wherever I have mixed it, oh God, Father, help me, help me to continue my journey to Canaan. Wherever I have stopped halfway, wherever I have settled, in any way I have settled in Haran, Father, help me. Can you open your mouth and begin to talk to God? Have you stopped? She is a Christian of a truth. Are you sure? Are you sure that you are a Christian? Can you talk to God, Lord, wherever I have missed it before, give me the grace to keep moving. The grace to keep moving until I get to my destination. Until I get to where you want me to be, Lord Jesus. May I not stop halfway. Terror stopped halfway. The Bible says he died in Haran. 